Hello everyone. Thank you for joining the webinar today. My name is Pratik and I work with the product marketing team of Zoho Sprints. In this webinar, I am going to show you how you can customize your experience of managing your projects in Zoho Sprints. Let's quickly go over the agenda for this webinar. I'll first begin by giving you a walkthrough of how you can add custom fields and build customized layouts. Next, I'll be showing you how you can set up a custom work item type, a custom priority and custom status columns for your projects. I'll then demonstrate how you can apply filters to create and share custom views. And I'll conclude by showing you how you can create and configure project templates. We understand that different teams have different structures and processes in place that are very contextual to their businesses, which is why we provided an option to let you add custom fields and build your own customized layouts. Let me dive into the product to show you how. Click on the setup icon in the top right corner and under custom layouts and fields, select work items. Here you can see that all your projects are associated with the standard layout. To create a new layout, click on the add layout button on the top right corner. Let's create a layout for a testing team that wishes to add information about their test cases to their work items. So let's call it the test case layout. The description is optional and you can click on create to create this layout. There are 15 different types of custom fields that you can choose from. You can add custom fields like a pick list, a date and time field, a HTML field and more. To add a custom field to this layout, simply drag and drop the field from the list of fields that are available here. You can rename the default section if you want to. But one important thing to note here is that you cannot delete this section until you move all the fields to a different section. Let's say the team wants to document the acceptance criteria for all their work items. You can create a custom field of a text area to capture this information. Simply drag the custom field text area and drop it to the section. Let's name this field as acceptance criteria. You can choose between a default value or a placeholder value. And you also have the option to make this field mandatory. Let's keep this field optional for now and click on create to add this field to our layout. Now let's create a new section for our testing teams to document their test cases. To add a new section, simply drag the add section field and drop it to the layout. Let's name this section as test cases. Let us build this layout by adding a few custom fields. The testing teams may need a field to enter the test case ID, a field for details of the tester executing the tests, the name of the module that is being tested, the expected and the actual results, and the status of the test. Let's first begin by adding a custom field of a pick list for the module that is being tested. So we'll drag the pick list custom field and drop it to the layout. Uh, let us call the field name as module. Let's create a group name for module and add values like reports, dashboard, settings, payments, and we can even indicate a default value and choose this field as a mandatory field and click on create. 
The other field that we may want to add is uh, the name of the tester executing uh, the test. Uh, so to do this, we can uh, drag and drop the user pick list custom field. And let's call it uh, the tester. You can choose to display the list with all your project users or a selected set of users. So in this case, since only my testers are going to be using this field, I'm going to select a few users and click on add and indicate this field as mandatory and click on create. Another field that I may want to add to this layout is the date on which the tests were executed. So I can just call it date and indicate this as mandatory. I may also want uh, to capture the test case ID, in which case I can make use of the integer field. And let's call this test case ID. And I can choose this as a mandatory field. Now let's add a text area field to capture information about the expected result and the actual result. As usual, I'll choose this field as mandatory. Add another field for capturing the actual result. And one more field to indicate the status of the test cases. So I can again choose a pick list and call it status, past and failed can be my two default values. Again, keep this field mandatory and our test cases section is ready. And now I can click on save. I can also save and associate this layout to one of my existing projects. So I'm gonna choose one of my projects here I can see that it is mapped to a standard layout. So we are going to apply the test case layout to the project e-learning library and it's going to overwrite the default standard layout. Another way of associating projects to your customized layouts is by selecting the associate projects icon here and I can select multiple projects that I want to associate with this layout. Now let us open one of our projects to take a look at the custom fields that we created. So I'm going to open uh, the e-learning library project and I'm going to navigate to the board and open one of my work items. As I scroll down, I can notice the acceptance criteria custom field that we just created and I can also see the test cases section that we created with all the custom fields. So here I can uh, choose the module, uh, select a tester, enter a date, uh, enter the test case ID, type the expected and the actual result and uh, update the status of the test case. I hope this new feature of adding custom fields and building customized layouts is beneficial for you and your teams. Next, uh, we're gonna uh, see how we can create custom work item types, custom priority, and custom status. Uh, head to the setup icon on the top right, and under project settings, select custom item type. Here, you can select the add item type to define your own work item. So I'm gonna define a work item and call it client feedback. And I'm gonna classify it as a story and click on create. And below this, you can also add a custom priority for all your work items. So here you can see the default values that are available. To add a new custom priority, click on the add priority button here. Indicate a color and give it 
a name select create and I also have the options to customize uh, the status columns on my board I have already added a couple of custom status columns here uh, so the tested column and the ship it column are uh, custom status messages uh, let's go ahead and add one more for items that we want to hold and you can customize these settings for individual projects uh, so right now we've been customizing it for the e-learning project now let us go back to our backlog and uh, see how these changes have uh, taken shape now when I try to add a new work item to my backlog uh, while selecting the item type I can see that uh, the custom work item type of client feedback is now available and under priority I can see that uh, the red alert priority uh, that I had created is now available now let us navigate to the board to check the custom status column that we had added uh, so here you can see the on hold column that uh, we had created and you can simply drag and drop work items across different status columns uh, well uh, that's another uh, powerful feature for you to customize your whole agile experience uh, do try it out and uh, let us know if you have any feedback uh, in the meantime please make use of uh, the questions box on your screen to ask any questions during the webinar our support staff would be happy to answer all your questions uh, the next feature that uh, we're going to discuss in this webinar is about uh, creating and sharing custom views to create a custom view head over to the global view option on the top right and select the add custom view button on the left uh, let's say uh, we want to create a customized view of all high priority items that were completed uh, before January 2019 and you can choose to group this view and you also have the option of sharing it with a select set of users in your team so the first criteria that I'm going to apply is that uh, the name of the project is uh, the e-learning library project and the Zilker Airlines mobile app uh, the next criteria that I want to apply is uh, the priority which uh, as I mentioned is we're looking only for high priority uh, work items and we're looking for high priority work items that were completed before January uh, 2019 so the next uh, criteria that I'm going to apply is completed date is before January 1st 2019 and uh, the next criteria that we can apply is that uh, the sprint is completed so this way you can uh, zoom in to get the perspective and the view that you're looking for now let us go ahead and uh, save this view and there you go we have a customized view that is generated uh, which is of all the high priority work items that are a part of these two projects of completed sprints in the final done status and it has been shared with two users in my team I can even uh, choose to edit the criteria, filter the results further or even export this result as a XLS or a CSV file Another different way in which you can uh, create custom views is when you are searching for work items. Uh, you can choose to apply the advanced search parameters which is similar to the different criteria that we just apply. Uh, so here let's say I add uh, a criteria for uh, the project name and uh, I say that uh, the sprint type is a completed one and this time let's look for items that are in the medium priority so I'm gonna go and search these work items and uh, here I get uh, a list of 35 different work items 
and if I'd like I can go ahead and save this as a custom view. Here I can give this view a name, classify it under one of the groups uh, and uh, I have the option of uh, sharing it with a select set of users in my team. And uh, that's how you apply filters to create and share uh, custom views. We hope that this feature allows you to zoom in and uh, give you the perspective that uh, you're looking for. Uh, the last thing that we're going to be discussing in this webinar is about configuring your uh, project templates. When beginning a new project, you may want to customize some of the settings that you had created in your archived projects. And so to help you maintain the spirit of agility, we've provided an option to clone your existing projects and apply them as templates. To create a project template, I am uh, going to select my projects tab here and I'm going to select the create template option here. So here I can see that I have an option of uh, cloning one of my existing projects as a template. Uh, so let's call this the e-learning template and it also gives me information about uh, the layout that is going to be applied to this project. So we had created the test case layout for this project. So that's the layout that we are going to clone and create as a template. And I'm going to select add. And uh, it, it takes a minute for the template to get ready and uh, you'll be prompted to uh, refresh. And uh, there you go. Your uh, template has been created and all your work items that uh, were in the e-learning project have been cloned uh, including uh, your uh, epics. If you wish to configure this template even further you can uh, select uh, the configure template option on the bottom left and uh, you can add your custom work item types, your custom priority and your custom status. We've reached the end of today's webinar and I hope that these new features that we've released help you and your teams to customize your agile journey. If you have any questions or feedback, you can write to us at feedback at zohosprints.com. Thank you all so much for joining this webinar and happy customizing with Zoho Sprints.